and hopefully you'll notice that these oops are going to cancel each other out and I'll end up with just R squared on top so things are looking better now a mistake when people are working with these square roots that students often make is at this point they say hey that's just going to be r over r minus x but you can't do that the square root of this bottom is not r minus x okay however the square root on the top is r so that does make things a little easier Now, for those of you that have paid attention over the course of the last couple of months and read your book from cover to cover, you will know or recognize that we have a formula for this antiderivative. It happens to be found on page 351. And that formula says... that the integral of 1 over a squared minus x squared the square root of a squared minus x squared dx is equal to the inverse sine of x over a plus c. Now we actually do have this because back up here r is just some constant it's a number so on top we can factor that out and put a one here and then on the bottom r r will be in the same place as this a so this antiderivative formula that we have will turn out for us to look like this r that we factored out times the inverse sine of x over r and then instead of plus c we have limits of integration that we will throw in there okay keep track of formulas like the ones on page 351 and there are other tables in your book that give you complicated integrals that you can substitute in the antiderivatives for. So let's go ahead and evaluate this. <sighs> Substituting R in, following the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, we're going to get the inverse sine of R over R, which is 1 minus r times the inverse sine of negative r over r, which is negative 1. Now you're going to have to get out your trigonometric chart if you have that, or if you think in terms of the unit circle. The inverse sine of 1 is the angle that gives us a sine of 1. The angle that gives us a sine of 1 is pi over 2. So this is r times pi over 2. Minus, same thing over here, what angle gives us a sine of negative 1? A y value of negative 1 if you're on the unit circle. And that angle is negative pi over 2. And so here's the punchline r times pi over 2 minus r times negative pi over 2 turns out to be r times pi or pi r which is what we were looking for remember that we were trying to find the length of this semicircle which we've just shown 
using calculus to be pi r, then it only makes sense that the entire circle would be 2 pi r, and thus you can see where the formula for the circumference of a circle came from. I can tell you're as excited about it as, as I am.